Så kan man, man sætte mere abonnement og Jesper. Ja. En uh, international vegetar. Med også lidt faktisk. Det er noget godt. Og ja, der vil vi det på.
Vi kan sagtens spise dem. Jeg bare på smag. I kan godt ikke. Bare gribe til fad, Det var godt. Til det sidste, Det er godt, at to. Men der skal man også
der giver hele ned, så det, det er aldrig rigtig kommet til. Krishna, 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 Krishna,
is not doing all that it can do to help people, then the system is wrong and needs to change. The systems that we do have in place now are incredibly more complicated, more expensive, more traumatizing, more damaging, and get worse results. So it's like when I weigh simpler, cheaper, healthier, easier, more humane, more loving, more respectful, versus more expensive, more complicated, more traumatizing, worse results, more, more side effects, shorter lifespans for people, more brain damage for the people who go through the conventional system. And I'm weighing this, it's like, which is heavier, which is more important? <laughs> it's like, it was so obvious to me. A fair percentage of the families that this program utilizes are farm families in the Swedish countryside. And so the person goes and becomes a working part of the family. And so these, some of these people that they send to families are people who have been labeled with schizophrenia or schizoaffective, really the most extreme disorders. They are the people who, their options are you're going to go to long-term kind of long-term hospitalizations or here's an alternative. So the first thing is placing people in healthy families. I was a therapist in New York City for 10 years and I worked with a lot of people who had been labeled with extreme diagnoses, schizophrenia and bipolar, and my job was to find anyone who was having symptoms that were labeled as psychotic, and as soon as I found those people, I was supposed to instantly refer them to a psychiatrist. And what would happen to these people, they would go to a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist would do a checklist of symptoms, and then find the appropriate medication. The second part is the people are offered intensive psychotherapy, so they get to go into Gothenburg once, twice a week and be able to talk with a therapist who's helping them in a more professional way talk about what they're going through in their life. What is their history? What are their traumas? What have they been through? What are they feeling? What are they thinking? How is it living with this family? Are they enjoying living with the family? What are the stresses? Often it's incredibly stressful for someone who's been institutionalized for many years to suddenly jump into a functioning family. I realized that if I did what I was supposed to do, that I was actually not helping people, and on the contrary, I was hurting them. And the reason I knew I was hurting them is because I listened to what they were saying. And I realized that it was horrible for them, that they didn't like the treatment they were getting, and they didn't find it helpful. Of course, it made me question, like, what is it that I'm doing? Because it's not easy for the families to suddenly have someone who has extreme problems, long-term, decades of problems often, coming and living in their family. So the organization helps the family adjust to having, you know, often very difficult people living with them. They have a focus of trying to help people get off their medication. They have consulting psychiatrists they work with who agree with the philosophy of helping people come off medication. And because it's such a holding, nurturing, supportive environment, it really optimizes people's ability to not just work through their problems, but also to get off their medication. Whereas in conventional psychiatry, if someone desperately wants to come off their medication, they're not going to get any support. They're going to be told, what you're doing is part of your delusion. People had so-called symptoms that were psychotic. The rules changed. According to my training, I was no longer supposed to listen to them. I was then supposed to tell them what to do and stop listening to them. Because suddenly, they were no longer considered to be people who knew or felt what was best for them. And that contradiction, that contradiction really jumped out at me. And it brought out an anger in me. When I had an idea or a feeling or a behavior characteristic that made my parents or my teachers uncomfortable, that suddenly I was labeled wrong. I was labeled someone who didn't know what was best for me. I was labeled someone who was a danger to myself in some way, a danger to my own growth process. And outside authoritarian forces jumped in and took control of my life. I went into therapy as a therapist 
to really be useful to people, to help them grow. And when I realized these really disturbing rules were being applied to the people I was supposed to help, and those rules were the same rules that hurt me in my life, I said, this is not right. They love it. They find it a really nurturing, healthy environment that's very supportive of them. And so what I heard is that it, it embodied a lot of the values of what I did as a therapist, but with one big difference, that they did it better. As a therapist, I didn't have that kind of support. I didn't have families to help me. I didn't have colleagues to help me. So when I saw this Family Care Foundation, I realized this is the value of a program that can do better than what I can do. People need to know about this because almost nobody, people in Sweden didn't even know about this program. Locked in hospitals for months at a time, being raped in psychiatric hospitals, being force injected with medication while they were strapped down. No one ever listened to them. If someone had locked me up against my will because I had not been behaving in a way that was acceptable. Because I, I did a lot of troubling things in my life and had a lot of troubling thoughts and behaviors that weren't quite acceptable and acted nutty even at times. I was just lucky that I never got into the system. So the second program that I visited that I found really inspired me was the open dialogue approach in northern Finland, in western Lapland, basically out in the middle of nowhere. And the thing that drew me there was not so much the way that they worked, but their results. They had the best data in the world in terms of recovery rates. 80% or more of the people that came into their program with first break psychosis got fully well, had no more psychosis, and were off medication after a certain period of time. And it's like 80%, 80% full recovery without medication. I'm thinking, what is the full recovery rate of people labeled with psychosis in America without medication? It's like the data are so bad they don't even want to tell it. They're, um, grading recovery on certain criteria, such as going back to work, getting off disability, having a functioning life, having an active social life. These were people consistently, as a lot whose lives had been destroyed by the helping profession. I saw side effects, I saw people who didn't grow, I saw tons and tons and tons of people who had been able to work before they had problems and afterwards went on long-term disability, who were obese because of the medication, who had heart disease because of the medication, diabetes, who couldn't think straight, who could no longer read and write because they didn't have the concentration. And the whole system said, well, of course, Daniel, you have to understand that that's the schizophrenia. That's the long-term effects of bipolar. That's, that's their disease. That's the progression of the disease. But when I actually listened to people talk, I realized, this isn't schizophrenia, this isn't bipolar, this is, this is the long-term effects of a system that screwed them up. No matter what a person's problems are, they know what's best for them, and I'm gonna respect that. So right away, what happened to me is that put me in conflict with the entire system that was licensing me to work. I thought, suddenly felt on a very personal level how incredibly oppressive the psychiatric system was. But what I realized by watching them is their program was based on principles. And I like that, they had values and principles, and those principles were pretty simple. Their principles were when someone's in crisis, meet them immediately. Don't put them on a waiting list and say, we'll meet you in three weeks for therapy. Meet them within one day, right away meeting people. Second, don't put people in the hospital. Don't, don't rip them out of their environment and put them in this artificial, sterile, you know, damaging environment. So if at all costs, avoid hospitalization. The third thing, don't put people on psychiatric medication, if at all possible. Don't put them on, especially don't put them on neuroleptics. Avoid antipsychotic medication. Because what their data showed was that when people get on antipsychotic medication, very often they don't get well. Engage people's social networks. Get their family in there. Find out whoever's important to this person, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their husband, their wife, their children, their parents, their friends, it's a problem with social relationships, it's a problem with our social history, it's a problem with traumas. So to them, it's logical to see this as a problem of a social network. It's not just one therapist alone going in to save the day. Instead, it's two therapists, three therapists at once. The psychiatrist is part of the team. Often the psychiatrist is one of the therapists, nurses, um, all sorts of different teams of therapists who work together. And this is one of the keys of open dialogue is the principle of using open dialogue, meaning talk about things out in the open. By applying actual science to what I was doing, 
I realized that most of the mental health field was not scientific. And these so-called scientifically trained psychiatrists, and biological psychiatrists especially, really weren't practicing the basic tenets of biology or science. They weren't actually making hypotheses and testing them because of where I've come from. I said, uh-uh, I'm going to fight them. That's when it hit me. Okay, I've got a new mission now. The system has to change because the system is fucked up.